All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to respond to click events that occur on a specific item within your recycler view. To correctly respond to click events that occur on our rows, we're gonna utilize an interface. Now, if you're in a real project, I would probably put this interface in a separate file, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna define it within the adapter class. So I'm gonna go over to the My Adapter class that we created in the last video. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and I'm gonna type in interface. And then I'm going to call it Recycler View Event. And if you're not sure what a interface is, essentially it's a contract between a class that implements it. And this is just ensuring that whatever methods are defined within our interface are also defined within that class. Then within our interface, I'm going to define one function which will be called whenever the user clicks on one of the rows. I'm going to call it on item click. So come down here and type in function or fun and type in on item click. And then within this function, we're gonna take in a position, which will later help us determine the specific item that was clicked. And this will be of type int. Now that our interface is all set up, what I'm gonna do is attach on click listeners to each of our rows. To do this, we're gonna scroll up to our inner class, the item view holder, come past where we extend the recycler view dot view holder. And then here, I'm just gonna type in view dot on click listener. I'm gonna hit control I, and then we're going to override the on click method here. So I'm gonna hit enter and we should be presented with the following override. And before we start writing code in here, we're then going to come into the init and then I'm going to attach the onclick listener to the entire row itself. To do that, I'm gonna type in view, which is given to us here. And then I'm gonna type in dot set onclick listener. And then I'm just gonna pass in this because we implement the onclick listener interface here. Now, if you want a specific view within your row to respond to click events, so I have this image view within my row, say I wanted to only respond to click events on this image view specifically, I would do this instead, structure.setOnClickListener. But for this video, I'm gonna keep it as the entire row, so we're just gonna use view. With the code that we currently have, every time a row is clicked, the onClick method here will be called. Now you might be tempted to say, navigate to a new activity or show a toast message every time the row is clicked. This is incorrect. You do not want to do this. The adapter class is solely responsible for managing views within a recycler view. Rather than implementing all that code here, what we want to do is implement that code in the activity or fragment. To do this, we're going to utilize the interface that we created down below. We're going to come up to the very top here and we're going to take in another parameter. Type in private val, we're going to call it listener. And this is going to be of type R interface that we created. So it's recycler view event. And what'll happen is either your activity or fragment is going to implement this interface and pass in an instance of it to our adapter class. Then from within this on click method, we can call the method within our interface. So instead of writing all the logic to say, navigate to a new activity within our adapter class, we can write that all in the activity or fragment. So within the on click method here, we need to extract the current adapter position. So I'm gonna type in val position, set that equal to the adapter position. And then once we have this, what we need to do is make sure that this position is valid. So to do this, we're gonna type in position does not equal the recycler view dot no position. Now, why are we doing this? In the case that you have an animation to say, remove an item or remove a row, what can happen is during this animation, the user could then click on that specific row and then the position will be minus one. We do not wanna pass that into the on item click method we defined in our interface. So we perform this check to make sure that the position is valid. And then from here, we're gonna type in listener dot on item click and pass in the position that we extracted from our adapter. So our adapter is completed. Let's now make our way over to the main activity where we could finish this all up. If you take a look at where we set the adapter, you can see we have an error because my adapter is now expecting that listener. To fix this error, we're gonna come up to the main activity and we're going to implement the interface that we created in my adapter. So I'm gonna type in my adapter dot recycler view event. And if you put this in a separate file, you probably don't need this portion right here. But now that we're implementing this interface, we now need to implement the member. So control I, and we're going to override on item click. So I'm gonna hit enter, come down, and we're now presented with this new override method here. So before we go ahead and write the code within that method, I wanna come up and fix the my adapter section here. All we have to do is type in comma this because we're implementing that recycler view event interface. Now that we fixed the adapter error here, let's come down and write the code in the on item click method. I'm gonna move this up to the top really quick, paste this in, 
And within the onItemClick method, you are going to place all the code you want executed every time the user clicks on a specific row or a specific view within that row. Now, I'm assuming that you would also like to have access to the data contained within that row. To do that, you are going to need reference to that list of data that you passed into my adapter. In my case, I have this method called create data, which returns a list of type molecule. Now, if you didn't see the previous video, molecule is just a data class that bundles up all of this molecule data for a specific row. Now, chances are you have a view model that stores this list of data in a variable. I don't, so I'm gonna come up top here, type in private val, I'm just gonna call it data, set this equal to the create data. Then I'm gonna scroll down to my adapter, I'm gonna pass in the data variable here, and then to grab the specific row data that the user clicked on, all we have to do is type in val, I'm gonna call it molecule, set this equal to the data from up here, this is, contains the list of data that we passed into our recycler view, and then we're just gonna index it based on the position. Now that we have the specific row data that the user clicked on, for simplicity, I'm just gonna show a toast message of the molecule's name. So now every time the user clicks on a row, the name of the molecule within that row will show in a toast message. So let's go ahead, come up to the top right, click the play button to run the emulator, and let's see if I made any errors. So here's our recycler view. We can scroll around. If I come up to alanine and I click it, you can see we had a toast with alanine's name here. Scroll down, we'll try histamine, tyrosine. So it looks like the click events are working. If you're looking for a video that shows you how to handle click and hold events on a recycler view row, be sure to check out my video on that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.